Hi, thank you for joining me for Bible study. Taking a break, it's fifth Sunday at our church and we do some different things on fifth Sundays and wanted to do something different today as well for our Bible study. So Isaiah 65, you can start turning there. And this is one that uh, last few days and really for the last year or two, maybe even been thinking a lot about something a mentor of mine had said and that was uh he was he was it was said tongue-in-cheek uh he liked to pop jokes and stuff but he said that he'd made a deal with god that he would work in the fields of the lord in this life if god would let him be a farmer in the field in the next and he said it with a wink but it stuck out to me in a couple different reasons. One was just how much that Brother Marvin wanted to be a farmer, but he put the Lord's work first. And I just really admired him for that. He felt the Lord's calling to, to be in the ministry, to eventually be a missionary and serving in jungles uh, in Bolivia and places like that. But his heart was to be a farmer. And I just thought about, you know, will, what would that look like in eternity? And I got connected uh, remotely through emails and occasional video with a uh, Christian speaker who he ministers especially to Christians in the workplace and and. I find his stuff really interesting, but one of his key verses that he really focuses on is this passage in Isaiah 65, and I'm just going to read from Isaiah 65, verse 17 to the end, so it's a little long, uh, but some of it may sound familiar because it gets quoted again later on in the scriptures. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die one hundred years old, but the sinner, being one hundred years old, shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And as you read through this section of Isaiah, you're reminded that uh, Isaiah was preaching to a group of people who in a few generations, they wouldn't even be able to live in the promised land anymore. That God was going to kick them out of his land and, and send them into exile to purify them from the idolatry to Baal and so many other foreign gods that was detestable to God. And so these words uh, were words of, of hope and comfort to those future generations that as they lived in exile one day, promised land would be theirs again and it would be everything that it was promised to be because they would be different and they would be what they had promised to be and again you probably heard it in verse 17 that sounds like revelation and it's kind of where we're looking at is we start to picture where again put it into the context of where Israel was these promises, uh, no more would they be devastated by foreign armies and you'd live a full life. And, and even more than that is hinted at this. 
Well, in Revelation, the hints are revealed more fully. And so some of the hints here, uh, it's harder for us to figure out what exactly is going on. And you may have a favorite preacher who has a favorite theory on this. And, and that's fine, but I'm not going to pretend that I have it all figured out. But the one that I've been listening to, his name's Jordan Rayner. Uh, I'll put the notes, put it in the notes so you can find them later on. But it, he f talks about how this, we will plant, we will build, we will labor, but not in vain. We will work without the curse anymore. And that's something that is brought out when John wrote the Revelation after the visions that he'd seen. That the curse is done away with. No more by the sweat of our brow and, and futility in our work and in creation itself. No more will there be uh, this tooth and, and nail and blood uh, in creation. It'll be at peace. And things will work together the way they were designed. And that got me to thinking. Because he kind of asked the question, you know, what is it that you really enjoy? What work do you enjoy? And I've thought about it, and I don't know the answers to that, but you may know what those answers are for you. You know, I am smelling a cake in the oven right now. I enjoy baking and cooking. That's fun. Don't do it near enough, because when you're by yourself, it's a lot of food. But it's, it's fun on these occasions to do that. I love exploring new places. I love uh, riding my bike and exploring new places. I enjoy teaching the Word of God and reading and studying. Although I fall asleep oftentimes when I try to do it. But there's going to be things that we're going to be doing in eternity. As we were talking today, um, where one of our church folks passed away and we were on our way to visit with the family. And uh, one of our wise elders said, you know, I don't think we're just going to be singing Hosanna in heaven. I think we're going to be doing some other things too. We're here on earth as the case is, a new heavens and a new earth. And I can't help but think he's right based on these passages. We're going to be able to produce and do things for the glory of God, for his pleasure. But yet at the same time, it's our pleasure, freed from the curse to get to do. And that they shall not, verse 23, they shall not labor in vain. They will build, and they will plant they, as the days of a tree. So shall their lives be. And I like that picture. I like having my little garden and I like piddling in it. I plant a lot of things, but I don't always get to eat the fruit of it because it doesn't survive. Imagine growing and producing and enjoying those things. I planted some pecan trees several years back. Well, I got my brother to plant them, but I helped him. We're still waiting to get pecans off of them. Not sure when we'll get those. But as the days of a tree, imagine in your middle age planting a tree and seeing it come to full fruit and, and enjoying the fruit of its labor. I guess I go to this so that we remember what we're doing today Maybe glimpses of what we'll do for eternity as we work with our hands. Whatever you do, the Apostle Paul told the Colossians, do it as unto the Lord and not unto man. For there you will receive your reward. We serve the Lord Christ. We have opportunities now that our work is worth something to God.
in our cooking and cleaning and bringing order to this to this chaotic place that we sometimes live in it's valuable blessing others and doing for them those things too it's not just preachers and song leaders who are serving the Lord it's hopefully all of us with what we have and what we do serving the Lord being his image bearers in this place you know sorting organizing cleaning up pushing back the the disorder the briars and thorns those are a part of us serving god whatever your job is manual mental whether well paid or underpaid it is an opportunity for us to serve the Lord Christ. And whatever those things are that make it toilsome and under the curse now will one day not be part of the problem. And we'll be able to serve to our, to our heart's joy. Even so, Lord, come quickly, right? And so just some thoughts, some things to think about as we go through our days. Remember, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God bless. God keep you. We'll see you next time.